Hello, and I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where, in case you have not figured it out, today we are going to talk about image jump. Image jump is one of those topics that you may very well find on an exam, not something you're really going to use a whole lot in your day-to-day -day working life as an optician. But hey, it never hurts to work another Prentice's formula problem. What is image jump? Well, this is image jump. Super important, I'm gonna end up repeating myself. This is a common, ordinary prescription. We don't have anisometropia, we don't have antimetropia, we don't have super high powers, we don't have anything special going on. This is just a routine situation, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. We have our human, we have our distance prescription lens, and we have a great big bifocal lined segment. Let's say it's a 2, 250, quite strong. Person is looking out into the world and they're looking out in the distance and the object appears just where it's supposed to be. Everything's great. They glance down, they converge, they look through the segment, a little top of the segment there, and suddenly that E appears to shift position. It jumps. That's image jump. It's something people just get used to. It's just a natural occurrence, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in just a second. But, I mean, that's the basic concept of image jump, and it certainly is something that you'd want to know happens. But as to the rest of it... I think this is the 50th, or roughly the 50th video that we have produced, and there is a reason why I have not addressed image jump before. I think it's a lousy concept. The videos are here to give you stuff that you can really use in your day-to-day -day life as a working optician. Image jump is not really one of them. Let me run through this and then I'll, I'll work through a complete, full, straight top 28 example. Especially for those of you who are working through the complete program online, the Optician Works program, you know that I very rarely say easy or simple, but image jump really is just a very, very basic Prentice's formula problem. P is equal to HCM times D, which you should be familiar with. HCM in this case is relatively easy to determine. D is simply your add power. Really not a whole lot to this, all right? We're not talking about any special case scenarios. We're not talking about an, an application for slab off or something. We're talking about routine prescriptions. Let's say Mr. Smith has been wearing a minus one with a minus a plus 150 ad for the last three years. Doc bumps him up to a two comes in, puts on his new glasses, says, oh, wow, the print just jumped way up when I put my glasses on. Well, there's nothing you can do about that. He's gonna wear those glasses for a couple of days, and he's just gonna, his brain's gonna overcome it. He's just gonna be wearing his glasses. So why are we making a big deal out of image jump? We're gonna go through all this stuff in a second to figure out the amount that is created as an error in the image jump in a straight top 28. And you know what? Knowing the amount doesn't help us at all. Let's say we finally determine, and I don't think that's the amount, 2.3 base diopters total. So what? What I'm suggesting is perhaps it's time to change the conversation, all right? If your state exam, practical exam, is forcing you to do stuff with, with image jump, maybe after you pass and get your uh, wings, maybe it's time to say, hey, maybe we should consider not doing that anymore. If you look on books and online, you're going to find all kinds of stuff with old techs and ribbon segments and executives and glass. Glass doesn't even exist anymore in this kind of stuff. Let's change the conversation, all right? We've got to start looking forward instead of looking backwards. Enough of my little mini rant for today on Image Jump. I want to wipe the board clean. I will see you in a second and we'll work through a complete problem. All right, be careful. I'm armed here today. Let's work through a very basic image jump problem with a straight top 28. As is so often the case here, we're going to have to work the whiteboard two, maybe even three times today. So just because we work through all of this to figure this out doesn't mean we're done. What's kind of nice about this, let's just say you had a customer come in, they have this new lens order of minus 150, minus 50, 135 with an add of 225. We know they're gonna be in a straight top 28. Their left is a minus 175, minus 75, 140 add of 225, straight top 28. What's kind of nice is we don't actually need any of that, and I'll show you why that is in the next section. We do need that, and we know we're working with the straight top 28. We are working a Prentice's formula problem. P 
is equal to HCM times D. All we're going to do right now is figure out HCM, the distance moved. HCM is the distance from the segment edge to the segment OC. And I use the word edge because there are still round segments out there and stuff, but we're just going to be concentrating on that straight top 28. From the edge to the OC, to determine that, we can use a formula. The answer is 3.5, and it will always be 3.5. HCM is the height of the segment minus half the width of the segment. So if you take a straight top 28 and you take your millimeter ruler and you measure from the base to the top of the segment, you get 17 and a half millimeters. I suggest you try it. Go find a bifocal and a millimeter ruler and do it. Obviously, a straight top 28 is 28 millimeters wide. So if I have my height of 17 and a half and half of my 28 is 14, if I subtract this to it, end up with an HCM of 3.5 millimeters. So I'm halfway there. I just need to figure out D, which is nothing more than my add power and I can solve this problem. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why we didn't need this, what direction image jump always occurs, and then we'll actually solve to determine how much this would be, be creating. We have solved for HCM, which is 3.5 millimeters, and we have D, which is 2.25, which is our add power. The add portion of this, remember, is just a super simple spherical plus lens quite literally slapped onto the front of that distance prescription, whatever it might be. That's why we can think about this as being a separate piece that doesn't have to take into account what that distance prescription is behind it. Because it's a simple plus lens, if we took it and we brought it out into here and we took off this top, we have our straight top bifocal segment here. Remember when we looked at the height of that straight top 28, we said it was 17.5. Half of 28 in a circle would be 14. That extra three and a half millimeters up is really important in this, in working this through, because if it was at 14, you'd be at the OC. But because we are above that, we have that little extra piece, the formula or the concept, whatever you want to call it, for image jump, assumes that we're actually looking through this little portion, this, this part that's above the line, the OC line, which separates the two prism shapes, so that we're actually looking through this portion, so we are receiving base down prism. That's where that comes from. So your answers to your image jump problems are always going to be a base down answer. That's why. So we took our HCM 3.5, we multiplied it times our D of 2.25, we end up with 7.87, we divide by 10 to convert our CM to millimeters, we end up at 0 0.787, rounded to 0 0.8 diopters base down for our image jump. That is how one would work through a complete image jump formula. <sighs> sort of. You can actually use five for almost all of this. Slab offs are actually calculated on five. A lot of test questions and stuff will just use five instead of 3.5 instead of working through that whole thing that we just did. Hey, uh, what can I say? Um, look in the Optical Tutorial book. They show it both ways, 3.5 and 5 for that same segment. Is it really going to make any difference on the long end here? No, nope, none whatsoever. Another reason why I'm not that big a fan of image jump, but I hope that made things a little bit clearer for some of you that do struggle with it or how are facing an image jump problem. For any of you that are forced to work some of these questions, there are some default OC placements, or if you're HCM in the formula, for a round 22, you can use 11. For a straight top 25, 28, or 35, you can use a default of five. For an executive, zero. A flat top 40 or 45, zero. Or if anyone should ever give you a progressive lens question like this, 
why they would do that, I don't know. That too would be zero. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and it found it at all useful, hit the like button, leave me a comment, always happy to see those, and I will see you again next week.